Hi everyone, it's Nigel and you're watching Worship Guitar Theory. A friend of mine recently asked me if she was to play in the key of D, what fret would she capo? Today's episode is all about answering the question, what fret would you capo? And it's probably the question that's on the lips of many guitarists, particularly those who are starting out. Now, if you're new to using a capo, my guess is you're probably most used to playing with G-shaped chords. If you answer the question of knowing which key you're in, then the next question is, well, where do I put it on this fretboard so I can still play with G-shaped chords in that key. Okay, well that's all and truly good, but you don't want to be playing with G-shaped chords for the rest of your life, trust me. You want to sort of get out of that box and explore different sounds, different voicings, different chord shapes that's going to make you sound a lot more creative than just someone who's stuck in the key of G for the rest of their lives. We all love the key of G and G chords sound fantastic on a guitar. Sometimes you might want an E voicings there's a bit of a richer, fuller rhythm sound there, or perhaps you want a sweeter finger-picking style uh, using C-shaped voicings. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's kind of good to sort of experiment and see what you can get out of your own guitar. So the first step in, into answering the questions is to know your theory, which is what this channel is all about. In music, there's only seven alphabets that I use, the musical alphabet, just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, the trick to capoing or knowing which fret to capo is to know your chromatic scale. So in music, we have the seven um, alphabets plus in between notes known as accidentals or sharps and flats. Now, if we put them all together, you will see there's 12 of them starting from A all the way back to A again uh, and repeating. So as far high or far, as far low as your instrument can go. So there's no reason why on the guitar if you were to play A on the 5th string and then go all the way through to the 12th fret, you're back to A again because you've gone through all 12 notes in the chromatic scale which is entirely made up from half steps. Quick way to, an easy way to remember, remember chromatic scale is that between the notes B and C and between the notes E and F that's only a half step. There's no sharper flats between those two pairs of notes. If you remember that, you'll be able to work out the achromatic scale or any chromatic scale from any point or any fret on your instrument. Once you've got that, capoing becomes a little bit more easier. Now say for instance at the start of the video I had some examples of playing in the key of G with different chord voicings. So let's say you know you're in the key of G but you want to sound more like you're playing in the key of E. Well, it's important for us to know the root note of the chord that you're playing with. So, obviously with a G chord, the root note is G, right? Now, the trick is, if I want to sound like I'm playing in E, I've got to start with the E root note and move it up to G. And then count how many half steps I've made from there. So, if I'm starting with, say, because I want to sound like I'm in E, we know that the 6th string open E is the root note of the E chord, right? Now we work our way the, up the chromatic scale, up the fretboard, up to F, 
F sharp, and then we know G's on the third fret. So there's our trick. We'll put the capo now on the third fret and play an E shaped chord, which is actually now a G chord. So I can play now in the key of G, but sound more like I'm in the key of E. All right. All right. Let's think of another uh, a more common example. Okay. Let's say you're in the key of A, but you want to sound like you're still in the key of G. Now, probably most of you would probably have done this already. Well, now we've got to start with the G that we already know where it's on the third fret here, and we're going to work our way up to A. So G up one fret, G sharp up another fret, up to A, right? So how many half steps do we move? Two half steps, right? So all we're going to do now is put the capo up on the second fret, because G, no capo, A, up two half steps to the second fret, right? Now we play a G shaped chord, and that's now actually an A. So I'm playing in the key of A, but I'm playing as if I'm sounding, I'm in the key of G, right? All right, more examples. So let's think about, um, let's say now we're in the key of D, but I wanna sound like I'm playing with C shaped chords. So how do we go about working that, right? In this instance, we know that C is a simple open chord, C shape chord is like that. Now we will work our way up to D so that we get to the key we want to. So with C, no capo, it's in the open position. We move it up one fret, that's C sharp, another fret, that's D, right? So now we're, we know that that's two semitones or two half steps. So put the capo up two, which is the second fret. And now I've got C shape chords in the key of D. Well, I hope that helps you out today. If you've got any more questions, uh, pre please leave a comment um, or any more suggestions of what you would like to see on this channel. So stay safe, God bless you, and uh, we'll catch you next time.